Well, we can't escape. We all get them. Sooner or later, we're going to have wrinkles. So we might as well learn how to paint them. And that's uh, going to be my subject for today's watercolor demonstration. So thank you so much for being here. If you are new, uh, feel free to subscribe. I do this every week. So, and it's always something different. So let's get right into this one. Okay, so uh, this is a picture that I got online from uh, Pixabay. And uh, I actually had to look pretty hard because so many of the uh, older persons that they showed are uh, in black and white. <laughs> so I found one that was in color and had the kind of lighting that I was looking for. So if you really want to uh, find a good reference for which, from which to paint, my suggestion to you is to look for something that has uh, a, a dark shadow on one side and highlight on the other side. And the reason for that is because it accentuates the shapes better. Now, when we're talking about shapes uh, in, in terms of wrinkles, uh, they they actually have shape, they have form. Think of like a, a, a piece of fabric that is sort of wrinkled up and folded. Uh, it it kind of comes up and down and up and down and you know that's what our skin does too eventually. So I wanted to accentuate where the highlights are. Uh, now that's a brow, this, this, this is actually a man. <laughs> I thought it was a woman at first but it's a man and uh, no eyebrows. The eyebrows are all gone. <laughs> and uh, But, you know, there's highlights on the wrinkles. That's probably where you're, you're slipping when it comes to doing a face. You've, you're probably doing what I used to do, which was I painted the face and then I added the wrinkles with darker lines and it looks like a face that's covered in worms. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, not not the greatest look. So we need to consider the highlights of the of those creases at the same time as not just the shadows. So that's what we're going to look at here. All right. So uh, one thing I will mention is that I took this reference picture into my uh, photo editing program and I increased the contrast so that I could see those shapes even better. Uh, it printed out, this is regular copy paper, so it, it didn't print out, you know, as vibrant as it would if I were doing it on uh, uh, photo paper, but it's pretty good. It's, it's not bad. I'm going to be working on Arches 140 pound cold press paper. This one is a block and uh, let's get my palette in focus here. Let's just... Uh, Turn that off and on again. Sometimes it just, everything needs to be rebooted every once in a while. There we go. So I can just show you my palette as I'm working here. Most of my paints are uh, Da Vinci watercolors. And, uh, but any high quality artist paints would be fine. Uh, wow, we've got a big crowd today. This is just everybody pouring in from all over the world. Thank you so much for joining. Um, oh, and a note. Last week there was a question about could I add closed captioning to my videos? And although I can, that will automatically turn it off for all the people who need translations in other countries. And since I do have such a, a, a broad audience from different countries and different languages, um, I've decided to leave the closed captionings off uh, during the live and I will, um, you'll be able to see them on the replay. All right, hopefully you can hear me though. I, I, I do have my volume up, so you should be able to hear me. And uh, we're going to jump right into this. So I want to mix up a, uh, a variety of color here. I'm going to be using raw sienna. I'm going to use my larger brush. This is going to take too long to mix a big puddle. When you're doing the flesh tones, I would, uh, you know, regardless of the color of the flesh, I would make sure that you are mixing enough paint. You don't have to keep going back to remix more and more and more. But I am taking raw sienna over here. I 
I'm, I'm going to take some alizarin crimson. This is permanent alizarin crimson, by the way. Uh, they created permanent alizarin crimson so that the color isn't as fugitive. All right, so we have some alizarin crimson here. I might even use a little bit of little bit of cobalt blue over here. So that's going to be my main color for my face. Although I will so I'll, I'll throw in a little bit of um, alternate colors as well. But for now, I really want to emphasize where these light areas are. So the the top of her eyelid, her bra, his brow, pardon me, uh, the the nose, and so on. I need to make sure that those areas don't get covered up with too much color. I need to keep those nice and light and transparent. So I want don't want to put on heavy paint in those areas. I can start building up over here into the shadow areas. That's fine, but keep the paint really diluted when you're working in these highlight areas. So I'm slightly mixing my raw sienna and permanent alizarin crimson here. And I'm just going to jump in and start on the highlight side of the face. I think I need a lot more raw sienna here. And I want you to notice I am really loading up my brush. It is full. I'm going to go back to my palette quite a lot. I'm not worrying about the eye right now. I'm just going to go right over it. Okay, and that looks like it might be dark. However, we don't have any of the darks on there yet, so that is uh, only going to be dark looking against the white paper. So I'm going to try and get rid of as much of this white paper off the bat as I can. But really nice, you can see that this is a uh, diluted color. I'm putting it on really wet. I'm also, because when I do a face, it's often... Um, what was I going to say? Uh, it, it is on dry paper. I want to make sure that I am uh, using a lot of wet color. Go right over the mouth. Um, might leave a little bit there for the lip. Just a little highlight there. I could go over that too. What the heck. All right, so... Going back to my palette often, really getting this color wet. That's going to make this uh, all melt together nicely. I am placing a lot of a lot of uh, wet color on dry paper. You could wet it first, but if you're working quickly, you can put what very wet color and uh, plenty of wet color on a dry surface and you won't have issues. Now, there's a little bit of gray hair there, so I'm going to switch up my color a little bit, maybe put some of that blue in there. Again, pretty diluted because it's a very light color. Okay, so I've got kind of one tone, mostly, on everything, and I'm going to start building up some of the shadow areas. So as I start building up the shadow areas, my paint doesn't have to be as runny. In fact, my paper's pretty wet, so if it was as runny, I really wouldn't be able to keep those shapes where I want them. So I'm going to take a little more alizarin, a little more raw sienna, just not as wet this time. And I'm even going to blot my brush. Here, we'll blot my brush there where you can see it. And I'm going to start uh, mapping out where some of these uh, darker areas are. And as I do this, I am also trying to leave light areas. So we've got quite a bit of 
darker color coming down the side of the nose. Let's get more paint here. I, I want to do that side of the nose, but I know my paper's too wet right now. So I'm going to do the big, big general areas first. The areas where, you know, it's obviously a big area of dark. So I'll start there. A little more sort of bluish in this eye area. It will end up kind of purple because of the blue and the red. Okay, going under that that uh, pouch under the eye. This probably feels like you get to this point and you think, oh no, that's too dark. It won't be. Just make sure you've got some good contrast in your painting. I'm going to get a little bit more sort of reddish here. And because because there's this, all this green here, I'm going to incorporate some of this greenish color in the face. So I'm going to take a little raw sienna. Uh, let's take this, this hooker's green dark, and I'm going to mix raw sienna with hooker's green dark. I'm going to get a little bit of this sort of greenish gold color in here in the cheeks. I'm seeing that. Uh, very often when you're working on something, you think, oh, I don't see those colors. What's she talking about? Hunt. Hunt for colors. And if you can't sort it out, you can invent. But the thing is, is that you just have to make sure you are maintaining the correct value. Uh, there's certain areas of the face you know are going to be a little more red. Like the nose, um, you know, the cheeks are obviously more red. Um, certainly the lips. Uh, you know, wherever the blood vessels are close to the surface, you're going to get more redness in the skin. So that's why, you know, in some of the areas like around the cheeks, you're going to get a little more rosy and that sort of thing. But these shadows are going to have a little bit more of this uh, greenish color in there, greenish gold. So when people ask me all the time, what color do you mix for skin? A whole bunch of them <laughs> a whole lot of colors because skin isn't one color um, and and no two complexions are the same you know you could have somebody who's got a really really dark complexion and somebody who's very very pale so you're going to get a whole combination of things going on um, i'm going to use some more of this down here under the chin i have to work quickly because the paper will not stay wet indefinitely so i have to uh, keep this moving here All right, so this is general blocking in. That's what I'm doing right now. Just sort of generally placing color in the appropriate areas. That's not blending quite as I want. So I'm going to blot my brush and soften that edge. And this is telling me that I'm running out of time. I'm not going to have time to uh, keep going until I dry this and re-wet it. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I would love to keep going. I mean, I would, that would be ideal if I could just continue painting. But doing so will start to make this wash look very blotchy. So that's why I want to make sure that I am uh, 
going to dry this layer first so it doesn't go anywhere. Let's wipe my tape off first. There we go. So I didn't worry about the eyes because this was the very pale wash. As I come in with my darker shadows, I'll be able to work around those eyes. Especially an older person is going to have more um, blood vessels in their eyes and things like that. So you will see uh, sort of that skin tone in the eyes. I zoomed in on this a little bit more. And by the way, I did I did trace this uh, just to make it fast and, and accurate. I printed out a, a larger copy and I just put graphite paper underneath and transferred it. I love drawing um, and I encourage you to keep drawing. I think that's really important. But sometimes you can only fight one battle at a time. And so today we're going to just... Uh, work on the watercolor. All right, let that cool down a little bit. It'll be a little bit drier down here. Now one of the reasons that I have kind of delayed doing a demo like this is because when I do skin tones, I'm a realistic painter as you know, um, it takes a long time. I'll spend a lot of time building layers, but I'm going to try to do a fast-tracked version of what I normally do. So it won't have the same spit and polish that I would typically put into my portraits, but it'll give you the, the process anyway, so that you'll understand how I, how I approach these things. Okay, so that's going to cool down. Uh, I'm just going to re-wet this with my large brush. I've got, I have an even bigger one. I am working on a block, so I don't have the option of wetting the back of it. I know some people, uh, I've always got somebody saying to me, well, you know, you could wet the back of your paper and it would stay wet longer. And yes, that's very true. But my preference for painting, because I do so many layers, is I, I stretch my watercolor paper. So the back is really wet when I stretch it, but I can no longer wet the back once it's stapled down or in this case, um, attached to the, <laughs> to the block. Thank you. Uh, and I wanted to say, um, who was it last week? Jay Alves, thank you so much for the translation you put in the, uh, in the chat last week. That was so helpful. And I'm sure everybody appreciated all the all the uh, footnotes there. That was very thoughtful of you. Yeah, it, thanks, Vicki. Yes, put your put your questions in capitals, and then I won't miss them. I'm sort of glancing over at the chat as I'm as I'm talking and working here, uh, and operating the equipment and <laughs> all of that. So uh, it's it is easier. Okay, so let's uh, let's start thinking about getting. Uh, some more darks in here. So I'm going to use more alizarin crimson, permanent alizarin crimson, more raw sienna, that mixture there. Uh, if I need to darken it, I can go to some blue, some cobalt, and mix that in, but only ever so slightly, because if I have mixed a yellow and a red, and I start adding blue, I can make mud really fast. So I can add a little bit of that, uh, or I can even add a little of this hooker's green if I'm trying to coordinate it with my, um, with my, uh, the wrap or whatever. 
and so this is pretty wet now so I can start coming in my brush is too wet as soon as it makes that little blossom you know see that when I lifted my brush it made that little bloom I'm going to uh, blot my brush so that that doesn't happen then I can have a little more control over what what happens when I hit the paper and now what you're going to notice as I'm building this is that I am going to be avoiding the highlights in the wrinkles so uh, you have to get the main color down there first but then then there'll be the adding in of the the shadows after you've left the highlights so have you done that I mean have you been doing that in your past portraits I bet uh, my guess is that that is going to be the stumbling point when you're painting portraits and not getting the wrinkles looking right even a young person is going to have a few wrinkles if they're smiling if they're laughing if they have dimples there are wrinkles even on a on a young person I don't want all of my shadows to look the same darkness. I'm just going to put a few in, sort of uh, landmark area. I'm marking the the big important areas that are I know are extra dark. Okay, so this person has light from above and to the left therefore uh, the most of the shadows will or most of the highlights I should say will be on the upper or left side of the crease so if it's a vertical crease the highlight will be on the left if it's a horizontal crease like the corner of the eye the highlight will be above the the crease so if, if you're looking and you can't sort it out, at least know that. That's where the light source is coming from. And so you can see that what I left there is going to imply the wrinkle. And some are more subtle than others. Uh, let's come down into some of the lip area here. So I'm leaving a light area at the top of the crease or at the, the left side of the crease. You have to work quickly because the paper's wet, but make your best guess. Uh, I wouldn't guess at all of it. Look carefully. That's probably more important, especially if you're trying to paint realistically. Um, having the light set, light source change in the middle of a face is very weird <laughs> you don't want to do that now I probably am not going to get too far before I have to stop again which is why I stretch my paper I have to sometimes dry many times before I can uh, actually get all the creases in there but you're getting hopefully the the gist of it that there's uh, it's, there's very little paint on my brush by the at the moment by the way Ooh, getting to be a blossom there that means that area was drier so going to get out of there um, let's come down oops this is nope I can't go anymore <laughs> it's it has dried too much what type of graphite paper do I use and what um, and can it be easily erased later not really um, the, uh, the one the brand that I'm using is Royal Langnickel uh, I ordered it online and no it does not erase easily 
So you either don't make mistakes or don't press light, don't press too hard. Or the, the best alternative, and I actually have a video on how to make your own erasable graphite paper. So uh, maybe I'll put a link to that under, under the video after I'm done and I will add that in. All right, so I got a little bit done, but the paper started to dry. You know, when paper starts to dry, it, it's just safer to stop. I, if I push through, what happens is I just start making uh, blossoms and uh, patchiness. Oh, it just, it ends up ruining the whole softness of the face. Not that the face is that soft, but you know, the, the contours of the face. You start getting hard, hard lines, it implies hard edges and things like that. Now, there comes a time when it's like, okay, 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 I'm not going to keep wetting and painting and wetting and painting and drying and, and doing that over and over again. So at some point you may, when, especially if you're getting into some of the smaller uh, creases and things like that, you can work on dry because occasionally you do need those hard edges, right? So for example, let's uh, get a little more color here. Uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to use that, that green, that hooker's green dark, the, the green that's going to be for the blanket. I'll use that to help create the shadow because you know that red and, and green are complementary colors and they, they will uh, give you a good dark. Uh, what type? Okay, I answered that. Uh, all right, so if you work on dry paper, Okay, this is really important. If you're working on dry paper, make sure your brush is wet. If you're working on wet paper, make sure your brush is dry. Now, there's exceptions to that, of course. If I'm trying to do a nice even wash like I did at the very first, I needed lots, everything wet. Everything needed to be wet. Um, but I was working on dry and the paper was very wet. But if I'm working on dry, like I'm going to do right now, I need this nice and wet. And I need it wet because I want to be able to soften my edges. All right, so I wanted to create a little bit of shading in here. And I won't have time to go to my water bucket and blot my brush and get back here before it dries if my paint is going on there to dry in the first place. So. I'm going to start way back here in the clean area and just come up to this and I can soften that. You see how I was able to create that shape? I was able to get that very smooth. I can also, one of my favorite things to do is use a flat brush. So my flat brush, what this is going to do for me is if I dampen it, blot it, I can just make the paper a little damp immediately before I paint into that spot. It's not going to stay wet for very long, but if I'm going into an area, let's, let's do this area under the eye. If I just dampen this spot right here very lightly, and when I say lightly, I'm talking about the touch on the paper, it's clean water, blotted brush, and I'm going to come under this eye here. Oops, if I actually have a little bit of color in my brush. Now I dampened the surface there, so I have um, only a damp brush, but look at, I can actually get a fair bit of control here. I'm going to go a little bit of blue right here. Because I see a change in that, that shadow color. I see it get, getting a little bit purple right there. I can use this blotted brush, this blotted flat, and I can brush an area. So 
let's um let's look at some of these wrinkles up here on the forehead that I'm going to go back to just a little bit of a lighter tone or a little bit slightly darker tone than the original color I put down. And sometimes those, just those highlights make it look uh, quite natural for the for the creases so I'm just going to blend this into the surrounding skin so all of this uh, will end up getting a little bit darker but you can see the light uh, the highlight areas I'm leaving Rinse, blot your brush. If you need to soften something, do it right away while the paint is still kind of nice and wet. So you can soften things. But I'm getting the start of some creases. And some, some creases are going to be very deep and some are going to be not. So you, you need to have variations in there. So I can do some really deep creases with some really dark lines. Uh, but I'll probably start this way before I darken them. Not everything needs to be wet first. Um, just sort of the big blocked, blocked in areas. And I will, it, it'll take me a long time to build this up, but I'll give you an idea of it anyway. We'll get, I'm gonna, uh, there's no way I can finish this in an hour, but I can give you the, the general approach. So, if I come in around the eye and I really want to accentuate, you know, the, the darkness of this crease there, that's eventually going to get a lot darker. But let's get some of the shape of the eye built up a little more here. So for example, this, this pouch under the eye, that needs to be darker along here because it's a sh it's a form, right? It's not a flat surface. So there's no point in putting wrinkles on a flat surface. The face isn't flat. So I need to put it on and uh, create create the shape first of all. There. That was better dampened first. Okay, let's let's create the form of the upper lid. I'm going to dampen it first. Rinse my brush, just soften this a little bit more to blend that down into the make that eyelid look rounded. I'm going to zoom in just so you can see uh, this approach a little bit more. And I, I'm probably going to focus in on this area more so than um, everywhere else because I just can't get all of it done in one, um, one session. All right. So if I, if I stay focused on this area here, you'll see uh, what I'm doing. So there's a kind of a soft, gentle crease there. If you put lines on and don't do any softening, uh, it will look like you added lines <laughs> on the face. So make sure you are doing some softening at the same time. So take, take your blotted brush quickly 
and soften that crease. Probably missing a crease here, but I have to get as I get darker. I'm also getting a little bit more um, sort of burgundy or or even purple in some of these darks. Don't just keep using the same color over and over again. Um, I'm just going to do a little camera adjustment here. Sometimes when you zoom in, it changes um, changes the color because it's adjusting. You see it, the colors change a little bit as I zoom in. So I'm going to see if I can make a little camera correction here. Everything is very slow today. Okay, I'm going to put uh, I don't know if that's making a difference, but that's going to be okay, I think. Um, it's still a little light. I could I could maybe darken it just slightly because uh, what's showing up is is a lot lighter than what I'm painting. So let's darken it a little bit. That's a little more like it. Okay, so here we go. As as we come to certain areas, we want to have either more of the raw sienna or more of the um, alizarin crimson. Uh, Pam Gibbons, uh, you you're asking. Oh, I haven't I haven't set that up. Uh, do I ever advocate at practicing copying a portrait photo upside down? Absolutely, that is a wonderful practice to try because uh, it it keeps you from constantly thinking I've got to make it look like an eye. I got to make it look like an eye, and all you're left with when you're looking upside down because you're seeing it in such a different context is that you have to focus on shapes and values and shadows and highlights and you're, you're no longer obsessing over making it look what your brain thinks an eye should look like and that's what trips us up painting what we think our brain or what our brain is telling us it should look like instead of what trusting our eyes and actually um, painting what we're seeing all right I'm going to go even darker here oh hello hello paint Let's get that out of there. That's okay, because I've got, I'm going to use some of that anyway. I had to bunch on my brush. And I want to go darker here. Well, maybe not too much darker. Remember when you're tapering off something that you want to um, blot your brush and smooth out the end of the stroke as well. Otherwise, you're going to have a funny line here and wonder what the heck to do with it afterwards when it's showing up in your painting. <laughs> yes, very true. Like like tapping your head and rubbing your tummy, <laughs> painting upside down. But it, it does make you think in a different way. Use a different part of your brain. Uh, Do 
blot my brush, soften. You can even have a, a separate blotted brush, but you still have to keep that clean, so you're still rinsing regardless. All right, so we're getting a crease here. Now, putting a little extra dark in there while that's wet is right at the right at the edge. That will give you a really nice crease. And this is just, gosh, it's just a slow build is what it is. Do a few wrinkles, soften them. Okay, you can see that uh, that that looks doesn't look like you've just done a line on the paper. It looks like there's um, a form to it. There's a pretty dark shadow right here. Don't let that dry. You want to soften edges. It's going to take a lot of careful observation when it comes to uh, wrinkles. If you don't get everyone exactly the right, you know, in the right place or something, that's not going to be a deal breaker unless it's a really prominent crease, right? Then, you know, like the crease of the mouth, you know, everybody's got that, even a child has that. So I'm just going to keep building up here until we get something that, uh, Gives us what we're looking for. Now, because that brow kind of hangs over, this actually is a is a crisp line there. Because it's an overhanging brow. Now, it never looks right without some of the eye painted, right? I think most of us agree on that. Just looks terrible until, until we get something in there. So I'm going to get some of the, some of the dark of the eye in here. Gonna use, uh, you know, I'll use some darks in here, like some, maybe a little bit of even Payne's gray. Looks like this person has green gray eyes. To that just to give the green color. Now 
And what that's going to do for me, I find always this very helpful, is it gives me something dark so that I can compare my values as I'm working. If I can compare values, then I have a much better, sorry, the camera doesn't like it. Um, if I can compare the values, then I have a much easier task of getting the other values correct. So I have, if I have something dark to compare to. Can't do one without doing the other. I mean, you can. I can't. <laughs> it just kind of bugs me. So. We're going to go with some of the red color here, too. It's a lot of sort of red on that lower part of the eye. crease in there, soften it a little bit. Oops, going into the wrong thing here. Now these dark shadows, or these dark creases, um, you better get some of those soft, because those, if you jump a lot of values, oh, is that ever going to show? You can jump a few values, but as soon as you go to a real dark, uh, you better soften something, because it's always going to look so harsh. Hopefully you can see, oh, darn camera, um, you can see that the, the sockets of the eyes are really getting some shape now. But at the same time, I'm incorporating some of these creases in the eye. Um, this, is this news for anybody? <laughs> Maybe this is old. Maybe you already have this figured out and just wanted to know my approach. Um, but the, the, uh, the highlights are pretty important. Thank you, M uh, MB. Apparently, all right. So I want to get a little bit more color, maybe on this nose. Get a few more of these creases. Got to keep watching those edges that need softening. Always, always keeping an eye on that. I see, I'm looking at my, my reference here, and this could be just the way this printed out, but I'm seeing almost a little bit of a yellow in this, in the, like just where the shadow crosses over into the highlight, 
there's almost a little bit of yellow there. I'm going to use uh, just a tiny bit to go really easy with this, but um, just a little bit of the gamboge in there, just to bring a little bit of um, sunshine, I guess, to the to the nose here. little by little just looking for subtle little creases as well as the deep ones and painting small increments Creases sometimes start changing direction, so look for change of direction, too. But here, we need to keep things light on the upper part of the cheek because that's where the light is hitting. Blend that out so I don't get a blossom. dark there. Take a little, little bit more yellow down in here. Fairly runny color though. Uh, if you're working on this, um, it, what I find students will do quite often is they'll pick up the brush and they'll use the point of the brush and they will they will draw a line for a wrinkle. But I'm not drawing lines. I am leaving gaps. Sorry, I wasn't even really on screen there. But um, I'm leaving gaps as opposed to... Um, as opposed to uh, drawing a line. So I'm not painting with just the point of my brush. But the point earlier made that, uh, yeah, you don't want dark pencil lines when you're painting these things because the pencil lines through all these thin washes are certainly going to show. Uh, so if you can have an erasable um, graphite paper or something like that, it, it's a lot better. Too dry, too dark. So soften this, blot my brush and get that softened out quickly before that is in there permanently.
bit of a ruddy complexion as well. So we've got um, you know, little age spots and things like that. And then we're coming over into the some of the shadow over here where the creases are going to get a lot stronger because of the uh, you know the lack of light. As I said, I can't I can't make all of this perfect the way I would normally um, take my time with uh, because just we don't have that much time on a Wednesday morning. That's where the hair starts coming in here, so I'm going to leave that gap. I'm going to leave, an, leave a little sliver for a strand of hair there. And blend some of that in. Gonna to have to get a lot more sort of dark and burgundy looking for that to look right. It just looks like I've left little rivers <laughs> in there. Yeah, you know, I thought I thought it was a woman. This this uh, reference picture, but the description says something like. Um, man with gray hair or something <laughs> so unless it was named wrong i i i think it's a woman but it, it, I'm, i could be it could certainly be a man perhaps it's a perhaps it's a homeless person perhaps it's somebody who works in a market and is out in the sun all day and has lots of wrinkles i don't know makes you curious about the uh the story behind it doesn't it I like whenever possible to use my own reference pictures, but when <laughs> when I was asking for some volunteers with wrinkles to step forward, um, I didn't get too many people. <laughs> Nobody wants their picture painted when they're when they have creases. But it's infinitely more interesting to paint, I think, than than straightforward, uh, you know, smooth skin. I mean, we see that all the time on the magazines. That's that's there's nothing interesting about that skin. Okay, I'm going to start blotting my brush and smoothing that into the rest. There's some great, great deep cre uh, creases here that will look great. Notice that they aren't just lines, that the creases are just basically an area that has a hard edge. That's what makes it look like a crease.
blot my brush soften that quickly you gotta be quick about it if you're too slow you're not going to get that blended out you'll also won't have time to do it if you don't put it on wet enough in the first place all right so some of those highlights are a little exaggerated that's easy to take care of just brush over top do a wash over top and those get blended right in see but they're still there you still see that there's the feeling of the crease Right, so eventually that will build up and you'll see you'll see all these forms um, happening in the skin but it, you cannot rush this one this is something that just has to be um, a slow build there's there's no getting around that um, Keep building it up. I'm using kind of a broken line here because there's the texture of the skin there isn't that smooth. I have to soften that line. There's um, the whole issue of tapering off a line too. Don't just stop it suddenly. That's always going to look a little bit weird. So uh, a wrinkle that eventually ends, you know, if it gets to a smooth part, like maybe here or something, um, it, it, that's going to taper off. It's not going to stop suddenly. That will look quite, uh, quite weird. And if you can change up the color as you're painting, you know, always consider, you know, it's going to, it, 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 you're going to get more gold in some places, maybe a little greenish color and that sort of thing. Uh, keep that in mind. And if your highlights aren't showing, it's not because your highlights aren't light enough, it's because your shadows aren't dark enough. And so, especially when you're doing so many layers like this, you think, oh my gosh, I've got to be just about done. And in truth, you're not because you, you still need to build them up to the darkness that's required. Uh, so if I put, say, this crease in the nose... And I think that that's dark enough. Well, it looks like such a line right now but I'd have to blend it in and I may have to, by the time that dries, it might be too light again.
But in any case, I can almost promise that most of your issues with painting older skin or wrinkles or creases and things like that, it stems from painting them in like lines. I want to get a little bit in the mouth here because I, I put a little bit of detail in the eyes. I'm going to put a little bit in the mouth as well. Just keeping an eye on my time. Try to keep it between an hour and a, an hour to an hour and a half. These uh, these demonstrations. If I go long, then I just I cut it short. And if it's something I think I can finish in the next week, I'll do that. Uh, but this I only wanted to show wrinkles. I didn't want to show an entire portrait today. Uh, but I just wanted to show how to approach it. So I'm going to come in here with a nice dark. And it's a little bit of a... Uh, a lot, like definitely got more of the permanent alizarin crimson in this. Soften some of these edges. The creases in the mouth, those are wrinkles too, right? The creases in the mouth are often indicated uh, with, with vertical lines. But they have to follow the contour of the lip. So if the lip is rounded, so the lines must be as well. Especially if the person's face is turned. You're really going to notice that. Paying attention not to color, not to cover up all my highlights in here. That's going to be very important. There's a lot of creases on the, you know, on the under lip, under the, where the chin is and things like that. Soften the line so that it's not the same darkness all the way down that crease.
Now you're seeing this very close up. Uh, keep in mind that watercolor is not typically looked at uh, from the distance that you're working on it as you were painting. You know, it's typically hung on a wall and you're sitting in a chair in the room and you're seeing it that way or walking by it and then you see it that way. You Nobody's looking at it as close as you are or being as analytical as you are. They're seeing the whole thing working together. So step back once in a while and uh, evaluate whether or not you know, it, it's giving you the impression of what you need to do. It, it just needs to be impressionistic. It does not need to be uh, uh, hyper-realistic or anything like that. The, it took me a long time to sort of get my head around that. Is it like, I, my always, my approach was always, if I, if I just put more detail in, if I just put more in, it'll look more real. And it, it, it didn't really work for me. <laughs> As as hard as I tried, I, it's like I tried too hard and it was undermining what I was actually trying to accomplish, which was the overall effect, because I was I was hyper focused on one little section and uh, not seeing the forest for the trees, as the saying goes. All right, let's see. Get a little bit more in this chin area, maybe. There's like little horizontal creases and Keep rinsing my brush as we're going into the light so we don't get a lot of strong um, color there. I might suggest that, you know, if you're trying this for the first time, Maybe try somebody who's not quite as wrinkled up as this person, uh, just because this it becomes such a, a, a tangled network of, of wrinkles that it gets hard to sort out. So some something that has good light and that has uh, not as many creases or changes in direction. Or challenge yourself and, and try this one. I did put the, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I put the link for the uh, reference picture in the description below. If I didn't do that, I will um, certainly do that. All right. And you might say, okay, don't do any more. But Honestly, you need to build up values. You need to keep working and building it up inch by inch. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about not just wrinkles, but some of the um, age spots and things like that that go on this on the face. And it feels like something that you you would just dot on, right? But here's what I usually will do. Paper towel in hand, okay, nice clean one. Uh, and I'm going to pick a, uh, needs to be a brownish color. I could even use something like a burnt sienna, that would work. Maybe add, just dull it a little bit, touch of Payne's gray or something. All right, so. What I'm going to do is hold my brush way back here, because if I if I do this, they will they will they will look like a polka dot dress, right? And it just will look funny. I want to um, just hit random spots and blot with my paper towel while they're still wet.
If you try to get too many in before you blot, you won't be able to soften them. Uh, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. And it's giving that sort of age spot uh, feel to this, this face. You can go back and darken some if some need to be darker. That's no problem, but I would still do it the same way because that keeps them soft and subtle. Same thing goes for freckles. If you have somebody with freckles and you want to do freckles, this is how I would do it. Uh, keeps it nice and soft. What did I miss? <laughs> um... All right, so I'm going to maybe just add a little bit more. She's got he, this older person. Has, uh, quite a few age spots right along here. And they are more brown, uh, brown in appearance. But I love how that makes that skin look really old. But I mean, look how, how not bright the side of the nose is. And you know what? That all, has to, that all boils down to not having enough uh, value everywhere. See how that changed when I did that? But I can't make this look like it's in the light unless I start darkening things up. So let's, I'll show you what I mean. If I come in here and I, I get a lot braver with my color here. Not only can I um, sort of adjust any of the uh, not not so smooth se sections, but I can create the feeling of the light. Right. I might even I might even try to lift a little bit more out of there. Take some of that color out. I really want to have a, a strong contrast there. And she, he doesn't have enough of the um, highlight on his, on his nose. Okay, likewise over here, if I, if I darken this up a little bit, That highlight on the nose is really starting to appear now. So I have to keep building. I can't just abandon it because, oh, I, I made wrinkles and now I'm done. Uh, you, can, um, uh, you can add more to what you've already got. Even if you've got some sort of detail in there. So let's take this big brush. Just going to take this big brush here and... get some of this built up a little bit more. This is fairly wet because I want to make sure that I'm getting um, blend. I 
And yep, it, it means I may have to reestablish some of those shadows, but I like, I like where it's going. So it's, I know I'm still too light, but. Don't worry too much about the uh, the little little wrinkles up in here because they're not going to be as bright as the wrinkles on this side in the in the sun or facing the sun. Speaking of which, did you get to see the eclipse on Tuesday? Uh, the solar eclipse. I was in the middle of teaching a class and. Uh, it was a complete traffic jam in front of the building and everybody and their brother decided to um, pull into our parking lot and just uh, watch it from there because they couldn't move it was it was gridlocked right so they pulled in and and we were um, descended upon by the <laughs> by the masses it was quite interesting This is my raw sienna with a little bit of hooker screen dark in it just to give us some of that ruddiness or the shadow that's got a little bit of a different color to it. I don't want that hair to have such a hard line so I'm just going to take my Walt blue here. Clean water down here, I think, just just so that doesn't have such a harsh edge. But it's coming a little bit a little inch at a time. So it will take time to, to put all this together, but Hopefully that clears up some of the mystery of why your wrinkles might not be looking right when you're painting them. Some of this area in the mouth. Oh, I'd love to get some nice good darks in here now. I love getting some of these darks in here. And I know some painters will just, so they'll finish this section and it'll be perfect. I'm not one of those painters. I have to work uh, a little bit everywhere so that I can step back and see if it's all working together. And then I build and I build everywhere. Uh, but that uh, that's that's my approach to painting. It's not right or wrong. It's just different than some people. So I'm I'm pretty visual and I have to see it, not just go completely on faith. I need to see it happening. Okay, so th that's now the darkest thing in the painting. Uh, but you can see that building up those darks uh, means like if you put something dark in there, then you realize, oh, okay, I, yeah, I gotta get this a lot darker here. I've got to get this darker, and so on and so on. Uh, and probably down in here as well. I probably have to go even darker still. But uh, eventually, it will come together, and we'll have a completed, uh, wrinkled person. And they are more work for sure. 
but so much more character. You know, life well lived or something, but... Uh, We all get them. I don't know why we're so ashamed of them. I guess we all just want to hang on to being young. But I earned all mine. I'm not young anymore, so... Little by little, just build, build, build. Uh, and you'll you'll get all those creases. But look how many different changes in direction we have. We've got lines that go this way. We've got lines that go this way and down and in on a diagonal and on a diagonal the other way. And really, it has to follow the contours of the face. Uh, be careful about going on autopilot and just, you know, wrinkle, wrinkle, wrinkle where you think they should go. You need to keep Keep your reference pic picture close by. Keep referring to it uh, frequently in order to create uh, the look that you want. Um, yeah, and don't think of the creases as just a line. It, it really will look like you've just got a bunch of worms on the face. It's not a good look. Okay, so I think uh, I think I'm going to wrap this one up for today. Uh, it's, it is time, so we're going to just going to end this. Thank you so much, and uh, hmm, I don't know if I'll continue this one next week. I, it would be more of the same, so I'm not sure that I will. I I know that there are a number of uh, landscape painters, still life painters, animal painters, bird painters, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, who are a little. Um, are patiently waiting as I finish up this series on on portraits so uh, we can we can go on to maybe a new topic next week uh, I'll probably probably continue painting this just because I think it's interesting and uh, I will finish it and if I do I will post it on my social media which is my Instagram and my Facebook uh, both which are listed underneath this video so thank you everybody I will see you next week and have a great week. Bye for now.